Hello again. In this video I'm going to talk about the nuclear reactor, the mechanical aspects of a nuclear reactor. So I've got a diagram here, a pretty simplified diagram of what's going on inside the, the core of the reactor. And, and this entire unit here is called the nuclear reactor itself. Um, why are these things used in our world? Well, um, the, the application that, uh, that we're looking at, I suppose, mostly is uh, the generation of electricity. Um, but also they can be used to supply intense beams of neutrons for uh, for experiments. Of course, neutrons don't have a charge. And also to produce radioactive nuclei for medical diagnosis. And in uh, videos prior, we've talked about uh, how they are useful. So uh, I guess this is a, a water-moderated power reactor is what it's actually called. Um, just to remind you, uh, the nuclear reaction that's occurring. We have a neutron being fired at a uranium nucleus and that uranium nucleus is splitting or um, which is the splitting is the fission um, as opposed to fusion and there'll be a video on fusion later um, uh, which is the fusing together of two nuclei. Fission is the quite the opposite uh, we have uh, three new neutrons, two or three new neutrons come off as a result. Um, actually, I'll label those. These are our daughter nuclei. Uh, daughter. And this is our parent. Nuclei, that uranium nucleus. We also have associated uh, gamma ray photons being ejected. Okay, so where is the energy coming from? Where is this heat coming from? Well, it's coming from the the kinetic energy of these nuclei, of these nuclei and those neutrons, and and also of the energy associated with uh, with these gamma ray photons, which have high frequency, of course. Uh, so, uh, parts of a nuclear reactor. We have the fuel rods. Now, the fuel rods are, are pictured there in red, and they are made of uranium, and typically that uranium uh, has has 0.7 percent. Uh, fissionable uranium and and that needs to be enriched uh, to make uh, between two and four percent u two three five um, and and it needs to be this much in order for these chain reactions to continue otherwise there's just not enough. To, to, to sustain the reaction. Uh, we talked in uh, another video about, I think it was in the last video actually, about the moderator. And this moderator is, is this dark blue water circuit here, a pressurized water circuit. And we're, we're going to call it our moderator. And it's our coolant as well. Um, so uh, we can't just let these fuel rods, uh, uh, th the reactions within these fuel rods, to continue to occur without cooling them down, and and this is where the uh, energy generation comes in too. By heating water, uh, we 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 create steam, and then that goes off to a generator um, to create electricity. Much like, well, it, in fact, identical to uh, coal-fired power stations. So we're just using heat to turn a turbine to turn a generator to create electricity. Uh, the other thing here is uh, are the control rods and the control rods um, they are connected to a uh, to an, uh, connected electrically to a to neutron um, uh, neutron um, sensors and the sensors throughout this uh, the, the core of this reactor I imagine the control rods connect electrically. Um, they they're mechanically moved up and down in between the fuel rods, depending on 
uh, how many neutrons are being produced. And remember, we don't want this reaction to go out of control. This reaction here goes uh, occurs in 10 to the minus 12 seconds. So in one second, uh, we can have uh, we can go from uh, 200 million electron volts to many multiples of that very quickly and of course um, if there's too much heat created in in the in the core then we have something called a nuclear reactor meltdown which um, which we've seen recently uh, in the in the last uh, 20 or 30 years uh, at Chernobyl uh, in the Ukraine and uh, in at Three Mile Island in America and and uh, recent more recently at uh, Fukushima in Japan um, and and of course the the fallout from that um, is is damaging to biological um, uh, entities. So um, we don't want uh, th these these daughter nuclei and this this uranium to come in contact with uh, with with living organisms because uh, uh, of course uh, the radiation w will uh, cause uh, sometimes severe damage to their DNA and uh, and and we know what happens then. So, okay, so we have this nuclear reactor, we have uh, steam generation, we have uh, we we have this enrichment being happening before to make these fuel rods. Those fuel rods are actually uh, uh, they're, they're encased in an alloy so that the moderator doesn't come into con direct contact with the with the enriched uranium itself. Um, this moderator itself is 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 going to be radioactive. Uh, but we um, that's that's uh, that's encased in its own casing and is not it does not come into contact with this steam generation unit um, because that steam generation unit of course goes outside the the um, this vessel here and uh, out into the environment so um, we want to isolate this system all of this radioactive system from the outside environment and we do that. Uh, by a, a steel casing on the inside here, and the, and probably the grey areas there, are, uh, this this grey um, silo sort of thing, is is concrete, and about five metres of concrete, I believe. So, and and that's to stop the gamma ray photons from escaping, um, because of course there's operators of this machine very close by. Um, nuclear reactors have a lifespan of about uh, between 25 and 30 years, probably because um, uh, the the gamma ray photons and the and the high energy neutrons uh, basically break down uh, this entire system over time. So that's the core itself. In this diagram here shows our our energy generation. So we have our fuel rods. This is this is our core again. Uh, encased in in this five meters of concrete and and steel uh, that they call that a steel containment shell in this diagram. Uh, at, inside here are our control rods, our water moderator circuit here, our coolant circuit here. It's uh, uh, and then and then our steam system, our our steam going to a turbine, going to a generator, going to create electricity here. Um, this condenser here is basically to take the steam and cool it down uh, so that it, uh, it it turns to a liquid again and we can use it again so over and over again in this circuit so uh, if you've ever seen a nuclear reactor you would know and and I know that the Simpsons have uh, you would have seen these if you've ever seen the Simpsons. These sort of silos, sort of thing, and these, these are very large. This nuclear reactor itself is can be contained in a small building, whereas these these silos are, are extremely large, and they're just cooling towers. The uh, the the white stuff that comes out of the white clouds that come out of the top is just a, just heated water. Um, there there are several benefits to nuclear power generation, and that is uh, that we don't get the uh, the emissions that uh, coal-fired power stations have uh, carbon dioxide into the environment there is none of that um, and uh, also the for the size of the the fuel that we need um, so that that amount of, of fuel uh, remember is each reaction is about a million times more powerful or gives off a million times the energy that uh, 
that a um, coal will produce. So we need much less fuel for a nuclear reactor than we do for coal. Many, many tonnes of coal need to be used to, to, to generate the same amount of heat that only a, a few kilograms of uranium will, uh, will generate. So, so um, that of course has implications for our environment, uh, no carbon dioxide emissions, uh, and of course uh, mining, mining large areas just doesn't occur for, for, um, for uranium. Um, the disadvantages uh, definitely uh, we have we have these spent fuel rods and uh, um, um, associated uh, radioactive isotopes that come off uh, that that are produced by these type of reactions are quite nasty. There's very small amounts of them, but they're they're so extremely nasty that we're not exactly sure as yet what to do with them. The other thing is uh, uh, that the nuclear reactors themselves, once they've um, once they've gone 25, 30 years, their useful life, they are simply shut down. And, and of course, this uh, this unit itself is extremely radioactive, and we are, we're not exactly sure yet what to do with these. So um, this is a legacy for the for future generations to work out. Unfortunately, um, other disadvantages. Um, well, I guess um, this the this heat exchanger here is um, is connected to a to to a water supply. Um, if uh, yeah, if we have any leakage of any sort, um, uh, then that that can very quickly get into the radioactive material can very quickly get into our water and then in our into our food chain, of course. And that would be extremely bad. Um, the 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 chances of meltdown um, are very low, but have happened. Uh, it, it seems three times in the last 30 years, or some something's caused uh, the reactor to be um, to be damaged in some way, and uh, and that has significant results for uh, biological systems on our on our planet, of course. So, um, and I think. Uh, I think I'll stop there. Thank you for watching.